treat. What a treat having uh, these gentlemen up here. I think we have, we're, you're looking at some of the top directors in the world. So I'm really excited about being here with you guys tonight. Um, Thanks for doing this with us. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Uh, a little bit of my MJZ comrades. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really lovely to be here tonight, so thank you. Um, I think what's really, when I look at all those spots, my husband and I were looking at these the other night, and I'm like, you know what's so amazing is that there's such great ideas, right? I mean, all of your projects, all the spots are all about the idea. And then, and then it's about how you guys execute them, right? And I think what I love and what I'd love to have tonight to be about is about talking about the craft. Because I think we have a lot of people in the audience tonight who were part of your shoots and, um, and here to be inspired by you know, some you know, great thinking. So I'd love to start with, um, I do want to say Martin's not going to be here tonight. Uh, he was last year's, uh, uh, nom uh, he won last year. Uh, he's from, he's in Denmark right now working on a big European project. So, but I do want to say a shout out to Martin. So great job. The three spots were fantastic and uh, beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, but we're going to start tonight with Steve. Steve, you've been a director for how long? 10 years, I think. 10 years. And uh, what I love about um, all of tonight's work is that all the directors have been directing for at least 10 years. Spike, how long have you been directing for? Um, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. yeah. And Frederick, how many for you? Two years. <laughs> exactly. And that's how you got so eight clear. nominations. <laughs> but um, what's neat is that uh, tonight we have such great uh, high level of craftsmanship with such you know, strong directors. So uh, Steve, one of the things that really came across to me in looking at your work and also looking at your other work on, online is your casting. I'm like such a stickler for casting, and I can tell that you are too. And you're from New Zealand. And so tell the audience a little bit like where you grew up. I uh, grew up in 400,000 people town. It was kind of middle of the road type place called Hamilton in the middle of the North Island. That's terrific. And you come from an advertising agency background? Yeah, I was a creative for maybe six years. Terrific. So tell me what is, like, tell me about your casting process, because that seems to be a really big part of who you are. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, when I first started directing, there was, a, um, there was definitely a gap in casting at the time. And it was, um, and having been a creative and then see people, uh, groups like Tractor come to light, who, who definitely pushed casting mm -hmm. at that time, and it was quite surprising what they did. And so that influenced me when I went into directing and I was looking at what all the other directors were doing and I thought, well, what can, how can I stand out? And I felt that the casting was very vanilla and very straight. So mm -hmm. I just tried to push it and I delved very quickly into um, street casting, ah. which is kind of easy to do in New Zealand and Australia. Right, right. Yeah. And um, what I love about how you treat your characters is like you're not making fun of anybody, but you have some kind of like interesting characters, right? Yeah. Um, but at the end, you really feel like you're happy for those people in your, in your spots. You want to see them win. Yeah, I mean, I think with, the, with my angle for street casting and finding interesting humans is that you, I, I think it, I really get excited about celebrating humans, basically. So you get to watch like a foray, and I think Dollar Shave was definitely an example of that. And then, um, and with the with the beer one, uh, both of the guys, the the woman at the end, she had she had acted before, but the two uh, and one of the guys had, but the young the young guy who was worried about dancing with his bride, he he hadn't done any before, oh, really? and he was a tow truck driver, and he would turn up at the dancing rehearsals in this tow truck, kind of looking like he did at the end of that spot, just kind of like <laughs> just freaked out, you know, going into these dance lessons with, with this woman he had never met, you know, who had, oh, that's was pretty hysterical. confident. So. <laughs> he kind of was that guy. So t talk a little bit more about the process in which you did the Dollar Shave spot, because that's such a brilliant spot. Yeah, that's a, that, was a, uh, that was an interesting one, because it was when I first read it, I was like, ooh, I don't know, is there, is there something in this? And then I talked to uh, one of the CDs, and we talked it around a bit, and then the overall concept was lovely and simple, but if the casting wasn't great, it could have been terrible, Right. basically. And they had this beautiful idea of this uh, big space where these lights would come on and light these bathrooms. And they were, and, and they were very open to those bathrooms being uh, uh, not, not complete sets, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were open to you understanding that they are sets. But once we get into those sets, it was incredibly important that the humans you're pointing the camera at were great. 
because right. you know like I think uh, who wants to shoot in a bathroom? It's like, you know, ring up, ring up your DP and say, you want to shoot in 23 bathrooms? <laughs> is it the last thing they'd want to do? <laughs> who, so, was the, who was the DP on Greg it? Greg Fraser. Oh, terrific. And so, um, so he, he really enjoyed the challenge too of creating this kind of spotlit world and then, um, and then uh, each bathroom lighting it in a very realistic way and then, of mm -hmm. course, casting it in a very realistic way, which right. of Dollar Shave Club group were really supportive of. That, that, that's a direct... Um, so uh, Mike, who owns Dollar Shave Club and created it, has a great creative team around him, mm -hmm. and so it was all in-house. And is, yeah. uh, are they from the United States? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, one, one of the creatives is from Australia. But, oh, but, got yeah. it, got it. But um, they would, um, and they liked to do meetings, and so they, <laughs> they pretty, and my, e, my EP said, um, Mike from Dollar Shave is very hands-on, and usually when you hear a client's hands-on, you're like, hmm, okay. Um, but uh, he, was, um, he was amazing, and their group was amazing. So you'd go into their boardroom, and it was like a war room of bathrooms and, what, and, and stuff oh, wow. people did in their bathrooms. It, like, it went all the way around the boardroom, and then they would like, talk about it incredibly passionately and about the different you know, people and um, different walks of life. And, uh, you know, uh, and then he would get up, and, ex and Mike would even get up and explain um, how he saw something. He'd like, like, I want a guy to... like. Um, you know, like dust his balls and stuff, and, <laughs> and, and, and then this other guy's like <clears throat> pissing in the shower, and I'm thinking that's going to look pretty gross. And, <laughs> and, um, but you pulled it off. Yeah, yeah. But like the guy with the, the dusting guy was fantastic. He ended <laughs> up, we, we cast him, but he actually ended up being a friend of one of the creatives. Oh. And, uh, and when I got to that moment, I, I was like, <laughs> okay, we've got to do that. And then you know, I would think, oh, Mike was showing me that in the boardroom. I say, so what I, what I want you to do is, and I go, oh, come with me. So, so, I, so I just I take him to to Mike, who's the client, and I go, "Where you go, Mike?" Oh, that's so. So, so he so funny. he's up and he's going, "It's like this and it's like this." And I'm really oh. excited. And <laughs> you got that? Okay, good. Let's go oh. back. That's when my husband grew, burst out laughing watching the commercial. Yeah, that was it. That was the scene. But I think the beauty is the casting because yeah. you know we we definitely did we definitely crafted the way the bathrooms were and mm -hmm. um, that all looks brilliant, but I yeah. think the humans that we pointed the camera at are important yeah. because if it was just like, hey, there's someone getting ready again. Yeah, then yeah no, that no, could for have sure. died. Yeah. The Pooh was a production designer? Uh, Joaquin Gray. Uh, and how did, you how did you work with him in terms of creating? It was a tough one, you know, it was like, uh, it was a lot of, you know, just a lot of previs yeah. and working out which bathrooms looked good right. as, um, as like, you know, for example, the older guy who sprayed the thing down his pants, he had this beautiful bathroom and one whole wall was disappearing, wasn't there. So there was this, it's about what was there and what wasn't there. It was right. a really, he did a fantastic job. And so there was just this lovely clown painting above the toilet, but it actually wasn't hanging on a wall. It was just floating. Right, right. Oh. So there was some really lovely work. Oh, it's, it's just, it's so well done, you know. And the other spot too is certainly well done as well. I mean, again, you know, you end up having that feeling of you really are rooting for, you're, you're rooting for him, the guy who, yeah. you know, the dancer. Yeah, right? I, kind of, I call that a love story because, because in New Zealand, there's, um, it's, like, it's, it's like won't dance, can't dance, can't dance, won't dance. <laughs> it's like the whole, all guys in New Zealand, it's like, it's, as I've grown up, and there's like one guy, my Uncle Bill, uh -huh. rest in peace, he would get up at any wedding and cut it and just go for it. He was like a hunched man, like balding <laughs> on top with like, whisk, you know, where you comb the hair over the top, right. but he would just go for it. But he was like the only guy in New Zealand who would do that. <laughs> so, so, um, so with that, so that's why the client really got into this vibe, and um, that's awesome. and it's kind of a love story. Like it's his commitment to her that he would actually even specially ask a workmate to teach him. Mm -hmm. You know, like a guy that he th knows how to dance from right. work. And did you shoot that in New Zealand? Yeah, 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 that's great. How how much do you shoot in New Zealand compared to here in the United States? Uh, it's since I've moved here, it's probably more. You know, seventy percent here. Got it. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Super job, um, Frederick. So Frederick is originally from from Sweden. He's a another MJZ, uh, eight time nominee. Congratulations! I mean, that's huge, you guys. That is huge. Eight times. Come on, that's huge. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. But you know, I I talked to David Zander today. I called him. I said, David, I need to know. I need some info on on Frederick. I mean, the guy does everything. I mean, I think we have tonight was a good example of seeing three distinct different kinds of commercials, and most directors can't do that. So, you know, hats off to you, bud. Uh, but anyway, I asked David about you, and he said, you know, this guy can do anything. He's so well-rounded. I mean, there's nothing he can't do. And uh, so, for me, I know I, when I read a little bit more about you, uh, 
I was uh, impressed by the fact that you talked about your writing and your writing of your treatments. And just talk a little bit about how you go through the process of doing a commercial in terms of like, from a writing point of view. Hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of anxiety. Um, I think a lot of the work um, is about trying to find um, what you're passionate about in the mm -hmm. project. And, and so for me, it's, it's uh, uh, absorbing the idea and walk around with it and try to figure out what is it that I love about it? Mm -hmm. And is it the casting I'm going after? Which it normally is, mm -hmm. you know, but I think you need some, or I need some other hook. Right. Um, so I think it's, um, I, I feel like there's a lot of sort of, uh, trying to find what you will uh, burn for 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 a month, you right. know, and and trying to um, uh, put that down in on paper and try to figure out as you, I've, I, that's my process. I try to you know start writing, mm -hmm. and it's so bad, it's so bad, it's so bad, and then I <laughs> I, I, I sc scrape everything and I go, I go a little dirty. Mm -hmm. I try to say, um, uh, you know. Hey shitheads, what the fuck do you want to do with this project? And right. I try to, you know, yeah. awaken. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then I realize I can't say that. And then I <laughs> delete that and I become nice. Yeah. And then so you know, it's it's all a process of yeah. trying to find uh, you what you what you really burn for. Yeah, you know, exactly. All the way through. The the BT sports spot, that little girl. I mean, oh my gosh, she is so cute. I mean, Thank you know, you. that's it's a little tiger in there, right? Yeah. Um just Tell me a little bit about that project, how, how it came to be, how did you get involved with it, and, and just your process on that one. Well, um, I think the, um, um, I read the idea and I really, I realized that this, this girl has an, a huge, um, there is that one girl out there that could right. be amazing. Yeah. You know, Where'd so you I find think, her? Where'd you find her? Well, I, I found, <laughs> before I found her, I think I had decided on three others. Uh, oh, really? You know, and and I presented to the agency, uh -huh. so it was very. But then, I, for me, it's it's hard to let go in the casting process. Mm -hmm. I I kind of love, you know, absorbing and 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 going through it again and again. So mm -hmm. I I present her, and then and uh, immediately I got anxiety attacks and felt like <laughs> there is a better one out there. Right. So I felt that as I was presenting her, I felt like, but I think I might have another one. And uh, and sure enough, I uh, asked the, the yeah. uh, casting agent to to keep going, yeah. and and um, um, she's great because she she always goes um, you know a little bit um, different routes, you mm -hmm. know. And in this case, we went through f um, soccer clubs and um, karate clubs and you know um, acting schools, mm -hmm. and and we we never let go really. So I think she came really in the eleventh hour. We had booked this other girl. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, we had booked this other girl and had to <laughs> right, Matt. Wasn't that the case? We had booked this other girl and we're trying to to see how we can get out of this. It was very very tough right, because right. they were super excited to to be coming from um, I think Glasgow or something, right, Matt? Oh, and wow. uh, so it was that was very tough. But you know, I always keep. Um, I, I don't. Know, probably somebody clever yeah. told me a long time ago. Do what's best for the film, you know. So I keep thinking about that. What's best for the film? Every mm -hmm. time I, I have a hard time to uh, consider um, or make a decision, I just go, right. "What's best for the film?" Right. And then, so I, 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 I had to make the tough call and call this mom up, who was, you know, super <laughs> sad, and the daughter was not happy at all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know. Welcome, or welcome to the I real call? world. Maybe I didn't call actually. Did oh, I? Oh, <laughs> I think I'm, I think Matt called actually. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I was amazing. under my duvet. <laughs> the uh, the Virgin the that's like no that's a whole different vibe, in which again shows your big range. Tell me about that spot because that's just like a whole other like effectsy thing. Lots of choreography. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, that, what I loved about that was to, to try and, and and apart from the opening shot and the and the end shot, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously CG. Yeah. I wanted to do everything in camera. Uh -huh. So we had so that was the. I'm not very technical. Mm -hmm. I don't like techniques. Yeah. You know, I don't like um, technology so much. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Spike asked me a couple of weeks ago about a camera, and I had no clue <laughs> at all. <laughs> but I was pretending. Right. You know, I don't know if pre pretended well. I believed it. But yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, but I don't. I don't care. <laughs> you know, there's better. Per, yeah. There's people that I hire that are great right. at that. You know. Right. So, but so for that one, it was really, really about trying to see if we could create these uh, 
um, background effects uh -huh. in, in camera. In camera. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so that was the, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, yeah. augment, but, but the majority, 80, 90%, right, Matt? You weren't even on that job, but so, <laughs> yeah. But, but um, yeah. Um, so uh, that was really about, you know, that was a real choreography trying right. to, because to, to, I think we even had uh, the, the, the panels we had, they had a live feed, so we actually had to uh, coordinate, coordinate all the all the different. You know, everything was in in, right. in in not one take, obviously, but right. in one coordination. Exactly. And who was your AD on that one? Shakir. Yeah. And is that so? Tell me about how you work with ADs because you mm -hmm. have such different ranges with, with the type of work. Yeah. Do you work yeah. with different direct different ADs for the style of of the commercial, or just about availability? Um, I mean, it's a lot of availability. A lot of ADs doesn't want to work with me again, but um, <laughs> so I only get one shot. But um, um, uh, no, I have you know I have a few guys yeah. that I you know, but there's you know yeah. all these guys. They're so good. They're so amazing. So it's hard hard to pin one down. Right. You know. Right. So I have to. But I've been lucky to to work with some amazing yeah. guys like Matt and Domino. Is Domino here? No. Demino's okay. working. Yeah, Demino is working. <laughs> yeah, but he's so there's a, there's a few guys that I always go to and right. and that I feel is um, is actually for, for me it's very important that they they love people as much that mm -hmm. they, and it's not uh, and that they love actors you know so you Bingo. can yeah because a lot of times there is um, so with a little girl for instance you know Matt had to spend a lot of time and and um, helping her to. To want to attack these rugby players, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's it's a yeah. So I need I need I need somebody who loves who loves and, and are really good with people, oh, and especially good. this this yeah. little girl. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, well done. Super 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 tired. Thank you, um, Spike. All right, my gosh. I don't think Spike ever gets bored because Spike is a feature director, he's a commercial director, he's an actor, he's a television producer. I mean, my gosh. And a skateboarder. <laughs> Not anymore. Not but anymore. I wish. <laughs> anyway, but uh, your Apple spot is just genius. Um, I mean, seriously, yeah, give him a round of applause because it's, yeah. it's genius. It really is. Um, I just love that spot. Thomas Smith, who's an AD, who's out here hopefully somewhere. Uh, Thomas, right I there. remember, yeah, Thomas works a lot with, with Spike and he's worked with me as well. And I remember when you were working on that commercial, uh, Thomas, you know, tweeted something about, okay, I'm on the set. You know, I don't know how many hours we've been here, but this guy is so patient. And, um, and he, Thomas is always, he always just goes crazy when I'm around him. He talks about what you, what you guys are doing together. And just really um, your level of perfection and intensity, but in an easy way. And, uh, I hide my stress well is all it is. <laughs> Do you? Well, yeah, you're, I'm very, you're very good at it. Everyone's like, you don't look stressed, and like yeah. my, my stomach's inside out. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he, he just always talks about how brilliant you are. And when I finally saw the commercial air, like on TV, it was like, holy shit, this thing is brilliant. He's so right. So really well done. I think it's so fantastic. I watched, um, if the audience hasn't had a chance to see it, uh, YouTube the behind the scenes, because it's a beautiful, really in-depth view of how you went about it. But I think you should, let's talk about it, because it's, it's so complicated but yet the feeling of it is so simple. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, I, I had two things out of my mind going. One, which is, uh, last time you shaved, you missed some spots right here. <laughs> I'm like, got the perfect view of that. <laughs> and, no, I, I like it. <laughs> um, oh, that's funny. And the second thing is, Thomas and I have worked together for 25 years. It's like basically um, one of my first commercials and then every vi music video and movie since then. So uh, yeah, Thomas and I are like a mind meld. And, uh, and I love Thomas because he's a filmmaker. He's, you know, he's directed before and he knows what's important. He's not just like pushing a schedule forward. He's, you know, he's attuned to what the project's about, what the shots are about, what, yeah. what, what I need and watching me. And if I'm struggling with something, having suggestions and, uh, also, like, just, you know, if something's going along, he'll sort of be ahead of moving stuff and, like, mm -hmm. prioritizing, knowing what's important to me and what's... Uh, he's just psychic besides being a great yeah. AD. Yeah, and no, um, 
the uh, and yeah, what we yeah, asked. So what's a, what, 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 well, I just want yeah. Well, I was I was curious like the process the because process. you had the choreography. I mean, when I was watching the behind the scenes, I mean, I loved how you were like you were so in it. You plus you handheld the camera. Um, I mean, you're you're like in it doing yeah. it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we worked on it for probably like two and a half months straight, like, you know, for the first maybe two or three weeks, just storyboarding and mm -hmm. designing sets and making models. And so we had to kind of get, we had to get the song first. I was, yeah, I was like, I, I knew if it had the perfect song and the perfect casting and the, the, the sets worked the way I hoped they would. And mm -hmm. our, uh, then I kind of knew like Hoyta is our cinematographer and I knew he would be amazing and I knew... Ryan, I love working with Ryan Heffington as a choreographer. So I knew those things, but there, there was like a lot of, I was just stressed about those things, getting the song that would s sort of uh, motivate what I was imagining. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of all hand in hand where as I'm finding the song that's giving me ideas for the set and as I'm uh, coming up with ideas for set that's giving me ideas for the choreography. And, uh, and so everything sort of pushed pushed one because obviously all thing, all the things had to work in in unison the choreography the music and the set mm -hmm. and uh we and we built all the sets like frederick was saying I, I really like trying to do things in camera and so yeah all the sets were uh we had you know we had models at our production office as mm -hmm. so as we're doing storyboards we have model makers in the other room and they're actually making the stuff so we can you know, put the, right. put our iphone down there and get the shots and sort right. of imagine what it's like and mm -hmm. And move the sets to the music, play the song, and move the little model to the music. And um, yeah, so it was a lot of like, uh, you know, just pushing, pushing each thing and um, right. forward. And then that would, inf and, and, and then we're like, oh, you know, we need another four bars of music here. And, you know, then the, get the producer to edit the music. And, mm. uh, you know, and, and so there's a lot of that kind of timing of, right. of yeah, to get it all in sync. I mean, I thought it was interesting, like just the lighting director and the, for when she's in the tunnel. Yeah. I mean, that was like really cool in the behind the scenes. Yeah, the, the lighting director is actually a Swedish concert lighting director. He does like Leaky Lee and, and uh -huh. shows like that. And I, I just called some musician friends and asked around for the best lighting directors they liked. And, uh, and I got this na his name. And, he, uh, and he's, he was there on set programming the lights for about three or four days mm -hmm. as we were on the other stage. And uh, it was really meticulous. And like every beat has, you know, is right. accented. And, and yeah. obviously the choreography is in sync with it. Right. And, uh, no, that's yeah. cool. it was so cool. How about as far as um, talk a little bit about the casting? Because she was, I mean, obviously she's a dancer, but yeah, uh, we just we, we auditioned a lot of people, and it was very it was hard to find. It's you know to find a dancer that can act or an actor that can dance like that. And <laughs> she is a, she's been dancing. She was started as a, a backup dancer in music videos when she was eighteen, nineteen, oh. and and then uh, now she you know dances obviously and choreographs her own own, own work. Right. And, uh, and it's a, a musician named F.K. Twiggs, who's a really incredible musician on top of everything yeah. else. That's cool. Huh. That's neat. How about as far as, um, okay, so you have the choreography. You have, the production design is, like, amazing. Like, yeah, oh. his name's Christopher like, oh. Glass. And, uh, and yeah, we, we, again, like, by storyboarding it really detailed, I would draw diagrams of the sets, bounce them off Chris, and he would have ideas and come with references and... Uh, and sort of, it was a real, like, um, you know, really collaborative yeah. process. And then, of course, him and his team just were, did incredible. We had two stages at Warner Brothers with these just beautiful, immaculate sets. Yeah. And oh, that's so cool. Thomas, do you have anything to add to this? <laughs> Matt, do you have anything to add to this? <laughs> oh, you didn't do this job. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. go. I have a question because what I, I saw it, it really hit me that time I watched it here, is the little notes that you put that go beyond the choreography and beyond um, the incredible set design, like when she whispers to the wall or when she sees herself in the mirror and she doesn't like that, and then, and then when she leaves herself behind, she's backlit and her face is dark. Like, I love those little moments. Like, w at what point do you uh, layer those into it? In, in because that's a connection to the music. It's a connection to music and also a, 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 in storyboarding because I'm, I'm also like thinking about, I don't want it just to be a girl, I want it to be a person and just a character. Just a person dancing, right? Yeah. She, yeah. she has to have a connection. Yeah, and I want her to have a story, We have, you know, her, where she's coming from work, where, mm -hmm. why, what the day she's having, what, what's happening in her life that sort of got, got her to this moment. And then so the, all those, the, those moments are sort of, I feel like we're coming out of her character and just trying to define her character yeah. from those. Those are nice. 
Yeah, Thank no, you. it's really good. How long did, how long, from start to finish, how long did it actually take? To, to, to prep and edit yeah. the whole thing? Uh, like two and a half months, probably, maybe three months, something like wow. that. Yeah. Wow. And um, was it Chai? What's the that? Agent, was the agency uh, It's No, Mal, the oh. company. And did they just come directly to with you, like, we kind of have an idea, or did you actually create the whole idea? No, they had a basic idea of, like, a guy in his apartment dancing, and his, and his apartment grows. And that, that, so that, they, it was, like, you know, like, maybe a paragraph long. And they had a, a dancer, they had in mind this guy who was an amazing dancer, but uh, th th that was sort of it. And then I, they, you know, I sort of just take, took that and, and right. tweaked it and went. And we wanted, I thought it would be cooler to have a woman, and uh, and um, I don't know, just went from there, but yeah. Good, excellent. Well, it's so well done. Well, good you. job. Um, all right, David. This is David's first nomination, so congratulations. Thank you. Ho hopefully many more to come right. in the future. I just want to say that I, I'm the only non-MJZ person here, right? I feel like they're... <laughs> I feel like there are really two you, doors in the back of the theater, and one. Did you push one? What's the <laughs> no. And one says uh, MJZ, and the other says other. And uh, I was banging on it for like you ten minutes be before someone MJZ. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, so David, yes. Tell me a little bit about um, your. Um, what, you come mostly from comedy. And so, to me, when I first saw the the, the films, I was like, wow. Everything I had read about you was all about comedy, but then here you come up with this Alzheimer's commercial that's completely opposite of comedy, and it's very heartfelt and, and kind of heavy and, and that type of thing. Um, I know you're character-driven as well, whether it's comedic, but talk to me about that particular commercial. I'm sorry for bumming everyone out, first of all, at the end of that, uh, <laughs> really lovely. Um, yeah, I think they, you know, they, they share the same DNA, you know, like I don't, even think of them as different, particularly like, you know, I'm still looking at the same things. I'm looking at what's the conflict, you know, what do characters want, what are, what's in their way, what are, how are they getting around it, you know, what are the, what's the shape of the thing, you know, uh, the rhythm of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, like when I do uh, comedy, I like I really kind of don't, I, I don't really dip into the gene pool. I don't, I usually don't cast like funny people, like comedic people. I mm -hmm. usually cast serious actors um, under the theory, which is definitely not mine, but uh, I'm very, very true that um, uh, the last thing you want is someone reaching for a laugh, trying too hard for it. Like the, Everything's funnier when you don't... And ev I think yes. all the work up here is an example of that. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, they're, they're, I don't... You know, I never thought they were very different, um, and I always thought I could do it, but um, it was hard to get people to see me that way. Mm -hmm. What drew you to doing comedy in the first place, um, or that style? Yeah, I don't know. I like. I think I'm just like congenitally stupid. Like I just feel like I, <laughs> I just like like doing smartly dumb things. You know. Like, so, um, you know, and I like. I, I'm very interested in um, the math of it, the 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 music and rhythm of comedy, mm -hmm. uh, mm. the surprise of it. So, but I don't know. That's a really good question. I think I just started doing it, and people, you know, theoretically, I was doing it okay and people kept giving me jobs so uh, we, we were in the back room the green room and uh, David was talking about how he went back he's back at NYU uh, taking writing classes so let's talk about that because I think one of the most important things that all of these guys have in common is that they're all writers and um, so I would love for all you guys to talk a little bit about your writing but let's talk to you uh, David tell me why you went back to write you know, to school um, it was a colossally stupid thing to do, um, and it was. I'm glad I'm getting nominated while I can't uh, work. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I just uh, I, I I kind of like I've sort of written a couple of screenplays and and um, a handful of them, and they've been either optioned or you know I've been attached to direct things, and mm -hmm. you know this world well. They you know you get financing, you, you lose cast, you lose financing, and um, and um, but I was always kind of struck by the I was always struck by the idea that I didn't really know what I was doing um, uh -huh. formally. And like, actually I'm supposed to uh, direct a, f a movie uh, at the end of the summer that I wrote and I, I only now I'm going, this is deeply fucking structurally flawed. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I gotta rewrite this thing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, but I ostensibly did it because like, I wanna write plays. You wanna write plays? Yeah. And, so, and you live in New York City, right? I do, yeah, so that's I'm a great. teacher, I'm at NYU. Oh, that's, oh, how fun. <laughs> 
That's good, though. <laughs> Spike, talk to me. I mean, you obviously, you've done a lot of writing. Was writing your first love? Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, yeah, it was the first job I got out of high school was writing for a BMX magazine. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, I think, I, I don't know, I think writing and photography, I was kind of doing both, and I think they were both very kind of maybe inseparable. Um, but, yeah, the, uh, um, yeah, writing something, uh, yeah, I love writing, but I, I, I mean, I love, I mean, the famous things like, I love having having written. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just love sitting there <laughs> trying to write. But. That's got to be hard. That's all yeah. I can say. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, well, Fred, we, we talked a little bit about you. But do you are you writing any films or? or long yeah, I'm before? trying, but You're I'm trying? terrible. Yeah. <laughs> As you're supposed to think. I don't know. No. But, but it, no. But it's no. But it's um. It's 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 fun to sit in a room and just, in a way just toy with your fantasies and, mm -hmm. you know, your ideas and all that. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, it's hard, you know. I think you just, you have to just, you know, go about it and try right. it and rewrite it. And re I mean, Spike knows really well <laughs> that process. But right. um, it's very, um, yeah, it's tenacious. That's good, though. But, I, but it is very rewarding once you've written that treatment or once you're, you're mm -hmm. done with, with your assignment. It's like having a baby. It's so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Steve, uh, Steve's wife's uh, a filmmaker as well, and a creative director, right? Oh, we're not now, but was, yeah. She was, right? So, um, but you guys write together. So talk to me about your writing. Well, I think um, exactly the same as what Spike said. Once you've, when you've written it, it's great, but the, but the writing of it is not. And when I first moved to the States, I actually, it was the, until tonight was the first time I had met Spike at a lunch at, MJZ, and I remember you were just finishing her, I think, and I asked you about it, and, and he, he said that it was incredibly hard, and it was the hardest thing he'd ever done, and he had to, like, make time for it, and, and I thought, oh, fantastic, he, you know, he said that, That's, that yeah. makes sense, Spike <laughs> Jones told me that, that's great, <laughs> <laughs> it was really good, <laughs> and then since then I've read that in many places as well from other uh, directors who I respect, so it's, it's hard, it's yeah. not easy, and I think what my wife and I have worked out is that... Um, you, you can't really stop because it's kind of like a rusty wheel. It's that rusty wheel thing. Mm -hmm. As soon as we stop for like a month or something and then come back to it, we feel like we, we should, we're hoaxes and we shouldn't be writers. Right. So right. it's like, I think the rhythm of it is because then you get, then you start to see some ideas happen and that and, you know, spirits you and you think, I actually can do it. And then you keep going and you keep going. Yeah. So I think okay. consistency is. Yeah, one of the well, just to add to, I think like I can't, I can multitask in a lot of other things if I'm like, doing, you know, prepping one thing and editing another thing or whatever it is, but I, I can't write and do anything else. Like writing, I really have to like just sit, take no jobs and clear the, my schedule and and I feel like that's the only way I can get anything down because yeah. it's not, the time that you're sitting there is only part of it. It's really the daydreaming time of like walking around, driving, mm -hmm. going to sleep in the shower. And if you're, if you're multitasking, all that daydream time gets diluted and you really do need that right. to like kind of, you know, uh, yeah. Focus it, yeah. yeah focus Just to it. Jennifer Egan, who wrote The Goon Squad and a great writer, uh, she said that uh, she writes because it's harder not to, ah. which is, I think, a great quote. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, not for Spike. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Um, how about as far as. Um, so, Spike, you, you get behind the camera. Anybody else get behind the camera? I, I did it. I, I operated early on, and um, I was so bad at it. It became a fun game because I would I would sit in the editing room with the creatives, and I would I just do like one. I just operate for one take, and I would just wait for that take to come on. It maybe it was the <laughs> third take or the seventh take, and you'd watch their face, and it would be something like this. <laughs> so I stopped operating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't waste the film. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what, um, oh, see. working in television commercials, what has that taught you, Steve? Uh, and working in this uh, kind it's of It's taught industry. me that, and, and which has supported my street casting theory, is that I deal in seconds. Oh. When, like even when I'm talking to the cast sometimes, I say to them, I deal in two seconds. So, you know, you just have to get here. Mm. Yeah, so it's taught me that you can, you know, even from people who aren't, 
professional actors, you can often trick them into a moment that you need. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You're a good leader. <laughs> good tricker. Yeah, how about you? It's a good life. Yeah. Great life. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Spike? Um, I like trying to tell a story in a condensed amount of time, and uh, it makes you really disciplined, and, um, and I like that they're kind of like uh, a children's book. You know, mm. you get to have like a beginning, middle, and end in some kind of context, and, uh, and I like music videos, in, in a, I always thought about music videos in a similar way. Um, yeah, but I like the sort of, you know, trying to make a whole, especially if you're doing a 60 second one, to have like a beginning, middle, end that mm -hmm. actually means something or you feel something. Right, right. How about for you, Han? Yeah, it's the same um, joys and frustrations. Like, you know, it's, it's deeply frustrating when you, like, you want the moment to live its natural life, right? You know, and it's 17 seconds, you have to fucking contract it, you know, so that it's three and a half seconds. And that's really, you know, if there's an art to it, I think that's, right. that's it. That's and it's, it's tricky. Um, what kind of advice would you give to young filmmakers? Start with you. Oh, come on. Surely you must. I'm like, tell me. Well, uh, practice. Do it. Do it. You can. Much easier with than when I started. When I started, you had to get film, so you had to kind of beg, steal, and borrow. Now you can, you know, you can make stuff like that. Mm. So, but have a good idea because you can shoot a good idea on anything, and it'll still be a good idea. Exactly. How about you, Frederick? I, I think just go out and try your voice, not not uh, be precious about um, uh, you know having the. Um, I don't. I don't. Maybe uh, not. Maybe not be too precious, you know, mm -hmm. and and just try and and find um, whatever your passion is within the within the medium. Mm. How about you, Spike? Um, yeah, I think yeah, just get out and yeah, make stuff. Just you know, make stuff all the time, and that's the way you learn. You get you shoot, you get in the editor room, you look at all the cringy mistakes you made, and hopefully you don't make them the next time. And uh, and and I, yeah, I think like you have your your voice. Is it, finding your voice is an abstract thing. I remember being young, younger and like not really knowing what that meant. But I realized like as I started doing it, it was stuff that just me and my friends would have thought was funny or cool or interesting or yeah. been excited to do. And it's like kind of then you think like oh this I'm supposed to be professional now like in this context. But as long you you really shouldn't change when you go into any room. You just stay excited about what excites you. What makes you what makes you laugh and um, and sometimes it's like the thing that might be embarrassing to say is probably the best thing to say. The thing that is maybe like a, this might be goofy or this is kind of revealing of of me in some way. And those are usually the things that that's your voice and um, mm -hmm. to actually go steer you know steer towards that. That's great. How about you, Han? I'm just here to endorse all those answers. <laughs> all really smart. I think it's important to have a strong point of view. Uh, that's great. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Or have any questions for each other? I think you're all amazing. Yeah, it's amazing being <laughs> up here with you guys. Thank you. Really cool. no, that's yeah. great. Well, thank you very much. Thank Thanks for everybody Thanks for coming much. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Cool.